Joining me now from Providence, Rhode Island is Vladimir Goldstein. He's a professor of Russian studies at Brown University. Welcome back to the show. Um, you know, Russia's high level leaders, including the prime minister, are the first to visit China since the 19th Party Congress. How significant is that? And does it set the tone of their relationship so soon after China mapped out the country's next five years? Well, on the one hand, it reconfirms how kind of mutually beneficial these meetings are, that it became almost like, you know, uh, a routine. This is, as, as your presenter mentioned, it's the 22nd meeting, which is very important. But it's also significant that it's not just a meeting where they sign some kind of a deals, uh, economic deals in the area of, you know, energy, you know, space or something. I think it's somehow kind of what we witness is, you know, much stronger alliance nowadays, the alliance which can be sort of involved certain kind of maybe ideal, ideological confluence, because after this Congress, you know, what, what, what Chinese leaders state that they have their own particular take on historical development, that they want to develop along the lines of this so-called socialism with, with Chinese characteristics. And this is, uh, presents a very serious alternative to what, you know, the West argues that the only way to the future is this some kind of, you know, Western capitalism and, you know, liberal democracy. We see the Ch Chinese presenting a very interesting, you know, viable, progressive model. So I think, you know, Russia, which for a while was rather slavishly following the Western model, you know, one hopes they will just learn something kind of very productive from China. So, so this is like in terms of long-term, uh, you know, thinking, and organizing things besides this immediate uh, cooperation. Trade is up between these two countries. Uh, Pre President Xi Jinping has said that he wants to deepen ties with Russia. Earlier this year, we know that President Putin said relations were their best time in history. So at the moment, how would you describe the current China-Russia -Rel relationship? I think they are very good. I think basically what they feel, uh, they, they're united. <laughs> Excuse not only me. by trade or by the by the fact that they are neighbors or by the fact that they have common interest in developing Far East or selling some uh, things to each other, but they united by, by their vision of the world. They insist, both countries insist on multilateralism. They, they, uh, both countries with proud history, with proud traditions, with their own way of looking at things, they are frankly tired of the United States telling uh, everyone what's right, what's wrong, and how things should be developed. So they now have, you know, m mutual understanding, mutual vision. And, you know, I, I just was very happy to, to read how uh, Prime Minister Medvedev quoted Confucius, who says, you know, whoever hates already loses. And now, you know, these countries definitely, they admire each other, they respect each other. But what they see is, you know, it's the United States now and the Western alliance and NATO, which is constantly engaged in hatred. So I think it was a very interesting sort of remark that we don't hate. We, in fact, want to bring everybody in in, in, in cooperation rather than progress on fear and hatred. Yeah, both uh, countries seem to be on the same page when it comes to global affairs. President Putin is expected to meet with President Xi on the sidelines of APEC in just a few weeks from now. Uh, what do you expect them to discuss during that meeting? And could there be more discussion when it comes to the Korean Peninsula and the DPRK? I think that's precisely what they want to discuss because, you know, of course, both countries are very much are worried about American unilateralism and they're worried about endless amount of threats against North Korea. So I think they definitely have to present sort of unified uh, front and insist that, you know, the issues of North Korea have to be decided through, you know, diplomacy. And it's time sort of for all these countries to sit together and negotiate rather than sort of uh, listening to the dictate from the United States. So it is very important for this uh, to lead us to meet free, uh, uh, regularly and to make sure that they, uh, uh, you know, look at things, you know, from the same perspective. All right, Vladimir Goldstein, thank you for your time.